DARE stands for Drug Abuse Resistance Education. It was founded in 1991 in Los Angeles, California, uh, by Police Chief Daryl Gates and uh, the Los Angeles uh, School Corporation. Corporations around to start picking it up, and now it's the largest anti-drug program in the world. Currently, I've been teaching DARE in 19 different schools here, whether it's the Evansville Vandenberg School Corporation, the Parochial School Corporation, and also private institutions here in Vandenberg County. Um, it's kind of fun going to the schools and talking to the kids about drugs and alcohol, hoping to get them to make the best choice they can so they will be the best citizen they can be. We're all over. We're at tw over like 26, 27 schools throughout school corporation. Um, so it's, and it doesn't matter where it's, where it's uh, private or public. Generally, when they started this program years ago, uh, the, the, the county schools got first choice because we're county police. And um, so that they, every county school gets it, whether it be public or private. And then what was left over, first come, first serve in the, in the, within the city limits. So we, we cover most, most of the schools. Um, first off, they realize that policemen are just regular people. We're not just a guy in a uniform in a car that a lot of times they may have had a bad run in or some of their family may have had a bad run in with a policeman. They get to see that we're real people, we're just like them, we like to smile, we like to have fun. Uh, generally, uh, first, your, your first lesson is to get to know you, tell you what we're going to do. Um, we talk about alcohol, tobacco, marijuana. We have three separate lesson, lessons on that alone. Uh, we talk about choosing your friends, which is probably one of the more important lessons, I think, because usually you. Uh, you, you are who you run around with a lot of times. Um, so we, we, that, that's a big one. Um, we role play, get up in front of the class, practice saying no uh, to uh, what, what kind of, um, what kind of uh, peer pressure is going to be put on you. And we discuss the different types of peer pressure. They actually have to get up in front of the class and role play and do that. Um, that's one that's it's, it's not my favorite lesson to teach, and I tell them right up front, I go, you have to work for me on this. You don't, a lot of them don't like getting up in front of the class. You know, that's still one of the greatest fears is public speaking, getting in front of a class and you have to learn to do this. And it's probably the most worthwhile thing we do. Um, my favorite thing about going in the actual schools and talking to the kids is the one-on-one -on -one personal relationship you build with them. It's a really neat whenever they get older and they want to come up and talk to you and they're like, hey, dare dude, how are you doing? Um, it's kind of really, really, really fun to see them grow up and hopefully make the right choices. An individual the other day at Guns and Hoses who is a police officer now and that's the one thing he mentioned was, I remember role playing. And, um, you know, and that's, that, he said that taught me a lot. You know, and that's, that's it's, as I say, it's hard to teach. It's hard to get kids fired up for it. But uh, once you do, they, they seem to enjoy it. We do the field trips. We have to, um, that's out of the old, uh, the, the field trips are based on the old curriculum. Uh, they had a lesson we brought role models in. They didn't put it in the new curriculum, but we still wanted to continue it. So we, that's why we have the field trips out here, and, and they're allowed to come out here. and meet high schoolers and uh, usually the high school that they're going to feed into. Our, our field trip consists of, of three segments uh, in no particular order. A lot of it depends on the weather out here. Um, uh, we have uh, th this, this instance we have uh, Dexter School coming out so we have bossy role models coming out because most of them will, will end up feeding into bossy high school. Uh, in the, you know, what particular high school they, they're going to go to, the majority is usually who we have. Um, they will speak with them. They have questions. We have some planned questions for them. They have been, and then the students have been prepped to ask other questions, um, you know, about middle school, high school, and so forth. Uh, from there, they go to a firearms demonstration. Uh, they will get a talk on guns. They'll see the guns. Uh, we'll have one of our fire instru firearms instructors come out, and they will um, show them the guns, the safety of guns, what to do if you find a gun, uh, answer any questions they can, and they usually get to most of them. Uh, and then uh, they go out and actually shoot the guns on the range with them, and the students get to watch. And um, they, I think a lot, of, a lot of students have seen guns fired on TV but never actually seen them fired. We want to understand how to respect a firearm. Uh, they can help us. We talk, you know, the fingerprints on a gun. If you, if you see a gun, why you should leave it alone? It might be used in a murder. It might be used in a crime. And, and we need to, we don't need you to touch that. Get somebody here. Because um, a lot of people, uh, I think when you hear about a firearms demonstration, they, they're a little apprehensive about it, but it's something that, that, that could save a life or solve a crime. Uh, the last thing we do is a canine demonstration, talk to them how, how we uh, train our, our canines to do what they're supposed to do, whether it be search for people, search for drugs or whatever, apprehend somebody, and uh, they get a lot better understanding of that also. The most favorite thing to do in class when we talk about stories about um, how not to do drugs and like not to drink or some, 
something's going to happen to you. You don't know what's going to be in the, st in the stuff you're going to be taking. And how everybody just talks about stories and what they experience. So I had a lot of fun here. And my favorite part would have to be the canine because how he sniffed out the drugs and jumped up and catched his ball really high. I'm hoping that with uh, some of the information that we give them that they will make the best choices, you know, so they don't end up someone in our system that has committed a crime, you know, may end up in jail. We want them to be the best they can be, whether it's education, um, jobs, you know, the best citizen they can be.